Okay, so once you've seen how ln of x plus 1 is obtained, uh, how would you find the Clorian series of arc tangent of x? So you would integrate it. Integrate so what? One over right, one so this is the integral of 1 over 1 plus, one plus x squared dx. So that's the idea. That's the, that's the idea. But in order to do that, we will need the Maclaurin series of 1 over 1 plus x squared. So what do we do? We have this. Right? So we, we have this here. So would you have to set it up into a form where it breaks apart the x into x times x? No, not that. Well, yes? Uh -oh. Can you just start off with x squared instead of x? Uh, I think you're kind of getting the idea, but but I, I you, you need to have the correct name for the operation we're doing. What operation should you do so that we can turn this identity into a Maclaurin series for one over one plus x squared? Set it up into the general series. Not set it up. Can you factor the denominator? Not factor. I need the correct correct word. Great, copy that. Okay, it's like one of these neglected parts of math that you forgot to learn, which is substitution. Okay. So what should we do? Substitute x for x squared. Yes, yes. See, so you, s you substitute x into x squared. No, it's not the same thing. You is that the same thing as plug-in? Oh, it's the same thing as plug-in, but did you say plug-in? Oh, okay, but all right, sorry, then, then I missed you. All right, so that's correct then, okay. So you, you substitute x squared into x, okay? So it's 1 plus x squared. And then, therefore, it's 1 minus x gets replaced by x squared. x squared gets replaced by x to the fourth. x to the fourth. Because, see, you're replacing x to the third by x squared to the third. So that, that's going to be x to the sixth. See how the game's played, right? You don't like it. All right. All right, so that's that's what we have. Therefore, we can say that arctangent of x is the integral. Since it's the integral of this, it must be the integral of 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus x to the sixth plus x to the eighth minus x to the tenth plus da 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 dx. Let's now integrate that. 1 integrates to? X. x squared integrates to? One third. Minus, now you have minus 1 third x cubed, and then the next one? 1 fifth. One fifth x, x to the fifth minus 1 seventh seven x to the seventh. 1 ninth x to the ninth minus 1 over 11 x to the 11 plus da da da. And then I forgot to do what? Plus, 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 plus c. c. Plus c. And then you plug in zero. 0, x equals to 0 both sides to figure out what c must be. So r tangent of 0 is a c, but r tangent of 0 is 0, so c must be 0. <laughs> so it's a really simple answer. The answer is that uh, r tangent of x is x minus 1 third x cubed plus 1 fifth x to the fifth minus 1 7 x to the seventh. Well, I'm getting too tired, so I'll just write that. Now, what's, this, what's the answer in terms of sigma notation? So what does this look like? 1 over n and n. Oh, but it's skipping numbers. It only gives you odd numbers. How do you write odd numbers? 2n two two minus 1. 2n two. Two minus 1 or 2n plus 1. Let's, let's use 2n minus 1. Because... 2n is an even number, and if you subtract 1 off of an even number, you get an odd number, right? Yeah, so that's how you understand that. Oh, there, but there's also flipping signs, right? So what should I do? Put negative 1 to the nth power. Yeah, and then, oh, by the way, I should start n from 1, because when n is 1, you get 1 in x to the first power, right? Yeah. So n is 1, and therefore, for the very first term to be positive, you need to put n plus 1. Should you also put that as 2n minus 1, since it's also only negatives? 
No, no, it's flipping. It's plus minus oh, plus okay, minus. This is what it flips, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that that makes it. If if you put two n plus one here, then it'll always be negative, which is not the same as this. Okay. Uh, and uh, as may, maybe you've already noticed, uh, but you can go with two n plus one, and and there's. The, the answer for such a question is not unique. You have many different ways to say the same thing. So if you use 2n plus 1 instead, let me write, write it here. So it'll be x 2n plus 1, so it should be 2n plus 1 here. And then in that case, n should start from 0, right? Yeah. It's infinity, but uh, if n starts from 0, then you, you only need to put n there, because when n is 0, this will give you 1, right? So you do get a positive, so that, that does work. Okay. Which means when it comes to figuring out whether to put n or n plus 1, you really have to plug in to match with the very first term. Okay. So they're both good answers. Uh, now let's again talk about the domain of convergence. What's the interval of convergence for this series? Well, we know that it came from this, right? So this one also will only converge when x is between negative 1 and 1. So only when this is true, then x squared would be between like 0 to 1, which will be in here. So it's going to work. Uh, but anyways, uh, so that, that's what we have. Uh, but then again, you might also question what happens if uh, if x is 1 or negative 1. And if x is 1, you get arctangent, so for x equals to 1, you get arctangent of x equals to 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh. Oh, I decided to say uh, x equals to 1, right? So arctangent of 1 equals to this. And if you actually compute this right side and compare it with this left side, you will see that the right side does converge and the value will actually match with the arctangent of 1. So uh, surprisingly, this does work. And uh, even for negative 1, at this time it will work. Because uh, you know, if you have negative, negative 1 plugged in here, it's just always negative 1 because you have odd powers, right? So you just get, if you plug in negative 1, you get the same value of this just with the minus in front. Okay, so uh, in this case, the domain of convergence will be uh, negative 1 to 1. Now, why would we want to know these things? Because if the right side does converge, it can reveal some cool facts. Now, can you tell me what arctangent of 1 is? Who knows arctangent of 1? Anyone? Arctangent of 1? OK, uh, let's think about the following. You have a right triangle of 45 degrees, and if this length is 1, what's this other length? 1. Because it's an isosceles right triangle, right? Using Soka Toa, Toa means tangent is opposite, opposite of adjacent. adjacent, so tangent of 45 degrees is? 1 over 1. 1 over 1, which is 1. Now, uh, pi radius is same as 180 degrees. You know that, right? Yeah. Now, what do you have to divide 180 by so that you get 45 degrees? Half of 180 is 90. 90, half of 90 so is 45, so you divide by 4. Right, so you know that. So tangent of pi over 4 is 1, right? So we're getting really close. Therefore, arc tangent of 1 must be? Pi over 4. Pi over 4. Oh. Because arc tangent is the inverse function. Mm -hmm. It switches the input and output, right? So what was the output became input, what was the input became the output. So arc tangent of 1 is pi over 4 which means that pi over 4 is obtained simply by just computing the right side. 
And so if, if you do, like, if you say you put that in a calculator and you put both sides, you put both of those in a calculator, they will come out. To yeah, 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 yeah. And actually, that's what I want to do today. Uh, so I have my Python up. Uh, but before that, that means that in order to get the pi, what should you do? You multiply this by 4. Okay. And that's by Gregory. He actually figured this out around the same time other people figured out, the, and McLaurin figured out his series, and Taylor figured out his. Uh, they were all uh, in the same, same time. They were all converging on the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could even think of the McLaurin series as like Taylor, McLaurin, Gregory series, or something like that. Uh, now, we're going to see that the performance of that series, however, is very bad. And right after this, I'll have a good explanation of why that's so bad. But let me show you another way to get the same thing. Uh, there's another famous mathematician, Euler, who said the following. You have tangent of A plus B equals to tangent of a plus tangent of B over 1 minus tangent of A tangent B. That's like a formula for this summation rule for tangent. Now, you, you don't have to worry about how we get there, but all of you know the sine A plus B and cosine A plus B, right? So if you do a sine A plus B over cosine A plus B and, and do some algebra, you'll see that this is true, okay? And then, uh, if tangent of A is one half and tangent of B is one third, then what would this be? This would be one half plus one third over one minus one half times one third, right? So that's going to be five over six divided by five over six, which is one. Now, if that's true, what is a plus b? Tangent of a plus b is 1. Therefore, a plus b is? 5 over 6. No? No. Pi over 4. Oh. Yeah, tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Right? So okay. a plus b must equal to pi over 4. But what's a again? a is our tangent of 1 half. And then B is arctangent of one third. Now this, this is going to be actually a much better series than before. And there's actually more improvements on this. Uh, but uh, just to give you an idea, arctangent of one half, oh, I, I deleted the arctangent formula, sorry, but uh, let me rewrite it. So arctangent of x is x minus 1 over 3x cubed plus 1 fifth of x to the fifth minus 1 seventh x to the seventh plus that of that. So you can easily calculate this 1 half, 1 half cubed, 1 half fifth, 1 half seventh. And then you can also calculate this one by putting 1 third, 1 third cubed, 1 third to the fifth, and so on and so on. And you multiply by 4 there will be another way to get the pi. Okay. Let me do the demonstration. So first, I want to define that arctangent function using the Picard series. So define arc t. And by the way, I, I don't want to use the other uh, arctan in full name because there's a, another arctangent defined already, so I don't want to use that. Okay, so it's like this total is zero, but I'm going to start adding things. So let's say for <coughs> i in range 1,000, that's how you repeat something 1,000 times, right? And then uh, I'm going to add to the total, what am I adding? Uh, it's uh, in, in general i, I raised the formula, but it's uh, negative 1 to the n plus 1 power. Okay. Oh, that's when it starts from 
one, but I'll, I'll be using the one that starts from zero, okay? So uh, to the nth power divided by two times n plus one. That, that's the one that, the, the version that sigma, sigma notation that we did, right? Then times uh, x to the power of uh, two times n plus one. So you keep adding this to the total, and then you return the total value. value. And let's see, what's uh, arctangent of one? Uh oh, sorry. I should have said n in range. Do that, okay. So what's arctangent of one? Oh, I, I forgot to multiply by four. So four times this gives you, what do you think it should be? Uh, pi, right? 3.14, right? Uh, however, the actual value of pi is like that. So it only agrees with the 100 digits. So it's, it's not very good, Oh, right? It's, it's not very good. I think you did pretty it's good. It's laughable. So, uh, what we probably want to do is to put this as like uh, one million. One million dollars. One million sums, and then now let's do four times arctangent of one. It's taking a long time because I'm asking it to do a lot. But uh, the payoff is that now I have how many digits? It's up right until the fifth digit after the decimal, right? Okay. But I'm not satisfied, so let's try to use one billion. Oh, it's going to take a long time. You do one trillion. Let's just forget. Let's just try. Uh, it's, it's probably going to say, oh, I don't want to compute this. So let's see. Uh, all right, it's going to take a long time. Could you do it? Yeah, it's almost a laptop. That's great. OK. Uh, so uh, it's too much. Yeah, it's too much. We need a power. OK, so uh, that. You see that even if I do maybe this much, that's like 10 million, that only takes a long time. Oh, that one still takes a long time. Come on. Oh, three. Okay, now let's compare it with, with it. Okay, so, so it's like one more digit. So you did 10 times more work to just gain one more digit. Damn. That's that's not digits? good, right? How many digits One more. in there is this? Huh? But not done calculating pi, right? Like, like, yeah, they're really <laughs> far in. Like, they're over 200 digits in. Right? Uh, I think, <coughs> I don't know what's the world record at this point in calculating pi. It should be in the millions, or even billions. I don't know. Oh, is that by, Max like, human com computation? No, 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 no. Human com <laughs> I think the world record, like, before computers were there, I think it was, like, 700 digits of pi. That Good we'll Yo, I feel bad for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah. If you're going to pay to sit there, yeah. do it. That's very, very uh, not, not accurate. However, we're going to use Euler's thing. What was it, Euler's thing? It was arctangent of? Pi of four. One half oh, plus <laughs> two half one, one third. One third. And if you compare this with pi, only adding just what hundred terms, you are pretty accurate. Actually, you know what? I think the the remaining two two is just the problem with the uh, limitation of the computer because. 